Folks, Shopify shares are running extremely hot. Stock price almost tripled from a year ago and is now the second biggest company in Canada at $90 billion, behind only RBC, the Royal Bank of Canada. Now, I don't own shares, but I really like the company's business model. There's a lot to like. They build great products and are really grounded with their finances. The problem is not with the business. The problem is the price. It's overpriced. I arrived at a $356 valuation using some very aggressive assumptions. The stock is trading at the $760 level. Uh, but before we dive into the numbers, let's first break down the business model. Shopify essentially provides a whole host of solutions for you to set up an online shop within hours. You don't need to design anything or write codes. Shopify has many themes and features for non-technical sellers to easily create a website for their business. As a seller, this is great because you own your brand, your data, and you have direct engagement with your customers. You start by subscribing to Shopify's platform, which starts at $29 and goes all the way up to $2.99, offering different levels of services depending on how much traffic your website has. Uh, these basic plans are made for small and mid-sized businesses, or SMB. For higher-end solutions aiming at enterprises, there's Shopify Plus, which starts at $2,000 a month. Currently, more than 7,000 enterprises actually use Shopify Plus. The more notable ones include Staples and Nestle. Shopify calls this subscription solutions, and it includes all the essentials you need to get an online business running. On top of the basic subscriptions, you can purchase additional features such as payment, shipping, analytics apps, financial services, and so on. They call this merchant solutions. Payment is one of the biggest components as it allows merchants to accept credit cards, the Apple Pays, and now even Bitcoin, thanks to a more recent partnership. Shopify charges a processing fee for every payment. And if you elect to use a third-party payment service, Shopify will still charge you a transaction fee. So one way or the other, they are making money on each transaction. Merchants can also outsource their operations to Shopify through the Shopify Fulfillment Network. They will help you manage inventory and directly ship your product from their warehouse to the end consumers. For businesses that want to be light in their operations, this is a great service, and I think this will be a key driver for growth. In addition to payment and shipping, Shopify also operates an app store with 3,700 apps and a financial services arm that provides liquidity for SMB merchants. In the most recent 12 months, Shopify delivered $686,000 on their subscription solutions and about a billion in merchant solutions. You can see that the add-on actually accounts for most of its business and growth, accounting for around 60% of their entire business. Now, we spend a lot of time talking about Shopify's business model for good reasons. It helps us look at Shopify's business long term and determine how much moat the product actually has. This is a $90 billion company with $1.7 billion in total revenue. So very little value of the stock comes from the current asset and the current cash flows Everything about Shopify relies on a big story in the future. So let's talk about Moat. What's the good news? The company is the leading e-commerce solution for small and mid-sized businesses, or SMB. Although there are some competitions like Big Commerce in this market, Shopify's e-commerce software package is, as far as I'm concerned, best in class. This has in turn attracted a strong developer ecosystem to help them build more apps and features. This gives them some networking benefit. The second mode is the high switching cost, because think about it, it takes merchants time and money to build and learn the platform. These are essentially sunk costs for them. Most merchants won't risk suspending their operations or losing their data to use other vendors that offer very similar solutions. Thirdly, Shopify demonstrated strong ability to upsell. What do I mean by that? When merchants grow their sales and become more successful, they use the payment features, pay for shipping management, upgrade to higher subscription plans, and purchase additional apps. What Shopify eventually hopes is that some of these merchants will upgrade to Shopify Plus, so in many ways, Shopify's incentives are actually aligned with those of its merchants. The more they sell on Shopify's platform, the better. You could already see why GMV, short for Gross Merchandise Volume, is such an important metric for investors. It essentially measures the amount of activities taking place on the platform. 
And the GMV number grew 46% to 17.4 billion of total transactions happening on Shopify's platform. I actually found this chart in their 10K. Uh, the different colors mean the different groups of users starting by each year. It speaks to the quality of growth. It means that Shopify is not just growing its business to, by adding more users, but merchants are actually finding success using their platform are, and are selling more. This speaks to the quality of the product. So it seems like all metrics are pointing in the right direction, right? What's the catch? Well, I have two main concerns for Shopify. The first is, almost by nature, small business often fail, and they fail 25 to 75% of the time, depending on which research paper you're looking at. You say, why this is bad? It means that the churn rate or the dropout rate is going to be high in the lower end market. And like all profitable markets, competition eventually catch up. Shopify could be spending a lot of money defending their market share going forward. And the second concern is Shopify really hopes that successful merchants would eventually move to Shopify Plus, their $2,000 a month plan. The majority of GMV actually comes from Shopify Plus. Bad news is competition on the high-end enterprise-grade software is fierce. Salesforce and Adobe currently dominate the high-end uh, high market as they offer more robust feature sets. Although Shopify's solution is generally simpler and cheaper, they lack in the sophistication on the higher level. Now let's finally value this company. First, let's focus on growth. Shopify made $1.7 billion in the most recent 12 months. The revenue is still small compared to a $90 billion company. But the company has seen explosive double-digit growth for the past five years. Uh, and although the speed of growth has dropped from 95% in 2015 to 47% last year, it's still one of the best in the industry. Uh, I looked across growth in a group of 91 SaaS companies, large caps, and this 47% growth rate lands on the 8th percentile, or the top 20% of the group. Uh, the group is on average growing at 27%, so Shopify's performance is nothing short of spectacular. I also projected that the global e-commerce software market to be $60 billion in 10 years in 2030, referring to different industry research. Uh, given Shopify's current lead in SMB and continued development in the enterprise level, I believe the company will be able to control around 33% of this market. And that amounts to $20 billion of revenue in 2030. Working my way backwards, I'm assuming that Shopify will keep its growth strong for the next five years, growing at 40% a year before slowing down to the 2% terminal growth rate. We get to a little over $20 billion of revenue in 2030. In fact, these are some pretty aggressive growth assumptions. Based on Professor Andrew Metrick's research at Yale, most companies only enjoy above market growth for about five years. So we are already explicitly assuming that Shopify is a special company that enjoys more years of growth at more explosive growth rates. Okay, let's finally move on to cash flows. To get to cash flows, we need to look at EBIT and reinvestments. Since we are already assuming that Shopify will be a special company, its operating margin should be on the top quantile within its peer group, at 28%. That is in the same playing field with Microsoft and Adobe, two of the best software companies in our era. I expect Shopify to reach the 28% operating margin in three years. Now, in order to keep up with the growth, Shopify will, will need to reinvest and reinvest a lot. I'm assuming a sales to capital ratio of two. This number essentially measures Shopify's investment efficiency. A ratio of two means that for every dollar of reinvestment, Shopify will be able to generate two additional dollars of incremental revenue every year. Compare this to the entire industry, the number is again going to be above average. Given the company has been making really smart decisions with their product and business, I think they should be given the benefit of the doubt. This is the projection for our free cash flow. We can already see that Shopify will need to reinvest a lot in the earlier growth years, which pushes down the free, uh, which pushes down the free cash flows down. But as it gets to the steady stage, the cash flow look healthy. 
It's good news that the company has no burden of debt today. It's it has a strong balance sheet and has just just raised a fresh new round of equity by issuing new shares. So the company is pretty healthy, and I'm looking at an initial cost of equity of 8.26%. As they borrow more in the future and move to the optimal cost structure, the cost of capital will eventually come down, assuming 7% at steady stage. Finally, adding back cash and subtracting the value of employee options, my value for Shopify as a company is $42 billion and $356 per share. As you may have noted, the assumptions that I'm explicitly making are extremely aggressive. They're all on the top level of the peer group, driving a big success story. But I don't want to stop there. I'm fully aware that I could be desperately wrong, but I want to just measure how deep in the water I could be. So instead of assuming a single number of growth margin and risk, I ran a Monte Carlo simulation by assuming not a single growth rate of 40%, but a rate randomly chosen from a range of value from 35% to 55%. Instead of assuming a single operating margin at 28%, we're randomly drawing each time from a distribution of value between 13 to 75%. You get the idea. The same goes for the discount rate and sales to capital ratio assumptions. Uh, I ran this simulation a million times and got a million estimated share prices. I found that only in less than 2% of the scenarios did the share price rose above the current market price. So if you ask me, is it possible that this could be the right price, I'd say yes. But is it probable? Probably not. Regardless of price, I remain confident in the business and would buy shares at a more attractive price. But as of now, the shares look overvalued, overpriced, and largely driven by momentum. If your goal is to maximize return, I would recommend staying away from this stock until the price comes down a little bit. Uh, but your story could be different than mine. You might have a lot more bullish story or a lot more bearish story. But if you have any thoughts on Shopify, please leave your comments below. I'd love to hear from you. Also, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you enjoy the content. Again, this is About Value. My name is David. Till next time. Peace.